Hi guys and welcome back to Toy TV. I'm Niklas Bauer and today we are going to tie kind of an articulated tube fly. Um, once again, keeping it a little bit simple, uh, we could of course make these flies completely super advanced, but that's not the idea. Um, if you've been watching the uh, Fly vs. Jerk season this year, um, you might see that uh, this is a fly I've been uh, fishing quite a lot with. And um, this is actually one of our ready-made fly here in the front. And then this is just a simple um, uh, fly in the back. And then this is a Bauer Pike rig here in the back. This one is tied on the RX uh, 610, so it has a little bit wider gape and the dragon tail. This type of flies I've been fishing quite a lot lately. And it's, I haven't really shown people a lot, but it's really, really good thing. And the cool thing with these type of flies is that you can actually play around with different color combinations because you can have different colors on the back fly, different colors on the front. You can also add uh, different weight beads here. We have this what we call a Bauer Pike bead, which is a, a bead that goes from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 grams, which has slightly bigger holes, so you can run that wire through it. And what you can play around here is you can actually put one of those beads in between the flies, and you can have a fly that moves in a bit different way, and also running a little bit different, a little bit heavier one here in the front, can get the fly to go up and down. But the cool thing with this, and that's in my opinion, is that this fly now, uh, before, during, and also after, I probably have, this combination probably has 100 pike on it. And it's completely chewed up. I've changed rig numerous of times, but the, f the fly is still good to go, you know. If this would have been a um, hook fly, it would have been shot a long time ago. So that's the cool thing with this. The second thing is there that you can tie this in numerous color combinations. I have a whole box full of different colors, you know. So I have orange heads, um, olive back parts. So here we can kind of have like an orange and olive. Um, here's the exactly the opposite. We have an orange back part and an olive front. And you can just have a super cool pattern just by playing around with different color combination. And this is what I like. It's, you can play around, you don't have to have 150 flies, you can have 10, 12 different flies, and you can play around with so many different color combinations. Like this is a super cool color combination in my opinion, and all of a sudden you can have a completely olive one that looks like a pike. So super simple, very simple patterns to tie. And of course, if you want, I mean, you can do something like the little bit more advanced ones we have uh, on Thai TV here with the magic head and stuff like that in the front. And you can push that in front you can just have the back parts and you can do that too, but they are quite heavy flies and if you're going to add another bar, back part out to it, it's going to be a little bit heavier to cast. So if you want to keep them light, you should watch this and uh, we might give you a few ideas. So we're going to tie an exact duplicate from uh, the one I used on uh, uh, Fly vs. Jerk here. Um, of course it's going to tie it a little bit more modern way. So we are going to do um, the front part with craft fur and then we're going to fold it back to make a little bit nicer head to it. And also we're going to use the Gulf Flexman so we have a soft head here so it can take a lot, lot of beating, you know. So this becomes a very, very durable bed head to be honest. So that's what we're going to do. Just have to convert my vise here to a tube vise. That goes quite quick, so let's make that happen. We are going to tie on um, the Bauer Pike tube, which is um, um, a tube which is very, very hard. So if you push this together or if you pull with the thread really, really hard, you cannot push this together, which is, in my opinion, the most important thing here. Because when you pull that bucktail and you want that bucktail to flare, if you pull that thread through the tube and you don't have that space so you can get the wire through, well, you basically, you, you, you wasted your whole fly tying session. So, so these we have in a, a clear color, but also we have it in a flore two cl fluorescent colors, an orange and a, a yellow one. So, but we're gonna start with um, um, the yellow one. So we have uh, a tube needle here. Um, so we're going to compress this and push it onto it. We are going to cut it off a little bit here so we don't use the full length. So we just 
push this up onto the tube needle here. So we have it situated here. Here I always like to spare a little bit extra tube because I want to be able to adjust the balance um, uh, into this rig by being able to cut the, uh, the uh, tube here depending on how long rig I want, how long the tail I want and everything like that. So I keep it a little bit longer than uh, necessary just to be able to have that possibility to adjust it the first time I use it a little bit. So, so this is what we're going to start tie on. We are going to um, use the TechStream 100 denier as I usually tie with. Uh, I'm going to run it in white just to get a nice um, and uh, not so visible color. So some super glue onto the tube here. So we make sure that the, the thread is nice and secure onto the tube so it doesn't slip or anything like that. You want to press that tube quite hard onto the tube needle because otherwise when you start pulling it, it just if that comes off, you know, you have to start it over again. So, so make sure it's situated really strong onto your tube needle. So we're going to keep the back part very simple. We're just going to flare a bucktail and then we're going to dress it with uh, Magnum Flashable. So this one is going to be in uh, fluorescent yellow and uh, we are going to take most of the fibers or actually all of the fibers from the lower part of the bucktail which by now you most likely understand that they contain more air than the one in the tips and that makes them flare much better. We are going to just like normal take all the short fibers out like that so we have that nice a little bit longer ones we can actually give them a good pull in the middle here so we get a nice taper to them and then just shorten them so they are nice and even so we take this bunch and we hollow tie it, it means we take the tips towards the right take the bunch in your left hand make sure that the glue is um, is dry and you press this all around here so you get them try to get them all around the tube and then you go one gentle turn here try to get all the fibers around and then you gently push a little bit more power through the thread here and you've, if you've chosen the right bucktail here it will flare like mine is doing here give it a good pull try to pull now the 100 denier is a very strong thread but try to pull with a straight bobbin. Um, you, don't also, you, don't, you don't want to go in too thin threads because it usually has a tendency to cut the bucktail. So as you can see here I haven't really succeeded in getting it all around so I'm just going to add a few fibers to the belly here so we get that nice flare all around it. It's easier when you're using a hook because it's the hook is quite thin compared to the uh, to the tube. So we're just gonna add a little bit here. So now we have a nice flare all around. So we're just gonna fold those materials back. Take the hair clamp and then cut all these existing materials away here. You can, if you want a lot of volume, you can keep some of this, but it is going to be quite a bulky fly regardless. So I try to kind of take them all away. So now we have a, a nice uh, flare here. Just gonna go one, twice to the thread here. We're going to take our uh, reverse tool, pencil or whatever you have. Um, so. You just go through there and push all the fibers over. You grab it with your left hand. You give it a gentle push here. So you get that fibers to get into the right angle right away. And well, I like to make it simple for me. So I just push my hair clamp over there then. Try to make that thread, which is coming down here now, 
go to all the way to the right and start to make a few wraps here. If you pull it straight over, you're going to take a lot of those fibers with you and you're going to have an open space here. But if you pull straight to the right and then start to wrap it, you're not going to take a few fibers with you, which is going to leave a, a gap on the, underneath here. So we have that. We have a, a nice color all the way around. So I'm just going to put a little bit super glue on my thread here. Um, then I'm going to wrap it gently towards the uh, bucktail collar so you get some glue hitting it but not into it straight away. So, so now we should have a nice flare here which is going to be quite aggressive because I'm going to dress this with quite heavy um, flushable so it's nice to have a little bit extra um, volume in that one. Um, we're going to run this Here's this one is actually a little bit short, but I'm going to dress it with some glow-in-the-dark flushable, some Mirage flushable, but all of them are going to be in the Magnum one, just to be able to have a fly that doesn't tangle at all. And if you use thinner flushable in the back part, well, they are going to tangle once or twice. So I'd like to keep it tangle-free. So this is going to be a few strands of the, the Magnum glow-in-the-dark. And then we're going to run some uh, Magnum in Mirage here bunch of strands and well what else are we going to put in here maybe a few strands of yeah why not some hollow gold it's gonna be a nice color in that one it's not in the original but why I'm feeling crazy today so we have them all on the table here I grab it with my right hand go to my left hand then take my comb and then start kind of like mixing them together. Just twisting it between my thumb and my finger. Then you go over, choose the other one and then you continue doing this. And after that you're going to have a nice mixture of different colors. So after that we are going to fold these together here because we are not going to use the full length because if we use that and they're going to be too long and we're going to have a rig here and a tail. So, uh, but if you're going to have a fly with no uh, rig and tail, well def definitely you can use the full length. But we're going to fold that together. And we are going to... Whoa, we're not going to fold them together. We're going to go like that. Cut them into two. This one we're going to keep for the next fly. So we'll keep them there. But these guys, we're going to taper. So we make sure that the ends are uneven, uh, so we don't have a fly that looks like it's chopped off. So let's see, we take this bunch here and divide it into two equal piles. Put one on the table, then we're going to tie the first one into the fly here, which I'm going to basically tie in at a rate of probably 60% in the back and 40% that we're going to fold over. So we're doing that like that. Put your thumb up, try to spread it nice and even like that. So now we have the first 180 degrees on top done. I like to put one turn of super glue there because otherwise we don't have, we're tying with a thread with no stretch. So as soon as we fold this around and you loosen the stretch of the thread a little bit, well, it has a tendency to move back, so, so I like to do it that way. It makes it very, very simple, and it doesn't... Um, well, it's not going to be a bad situation for you. So. so we do exactly the same on the belly here. So we try to spread it nice and equal around here. So make one gentle turn. Move with the thread backwards. Fold over, compress it with your thumb a little bit, try to spread in it, spread it all around here. Let's see if I made it on this side, well, not really. And go a few turns with your thread and let's see how we, how we succeeded here. Oh, not too bad. These are supposed to be quite fast ones because you want to tie a whole bunch of different colors on this. As you can see now, we have kind of a taper here. So we're going from shorter to longer and longer and longer. 
So we have like a nice taper, which is going to make it make a nice transit when you get it into the whole fly here. So put that over again, make a few turns, make this head nice and, and even here, uh, because what we're going to do here is that we're actually going to cover this with some UV resin. So we're just going to make Gonna make one turn here with super glue on this, so it becomes strong. We're gonna tie that off here. Push that thread towards it a little bit. So we cut that off. Make sure that this is dry, and then we're gonna take um, this is uh, Gulf UV resin. This is fluorescent red. So what I want to is to make a trigger point here. Uh, first of all, if you're ever going to run this fly by itself, you have kind of a head there. Or if you use two of the back parts for some reason, you have that kind of a contrast color there, so it becomes like a head. Uh, but also you want that to be quite more durable than just normal putting a super glue on there. Because when you're putting a, a bead there and you're putting bead in between and they're clicking in each other, they, you have a much stronger um, uh, fly here in the back if you cover it with epoxy or, or resin or something. So I'm going to cover this with the fluorescent red um, UV resin here. So I'm just going to um, gently, I'm trying to keep this as a thin layer as possible because I don't want to make the fly heavier than necessary. Make it go a few turns here. Oops. That's the good thing when you have UV resin, you can just cure whatever you miss here, and then you can just pull it off from the flashable here. So, so we're gonna turn that a little bit, and then we're going to cure it at the same time. So now we have a strong and uh, tight head to it. So we have a strong head. And that's um, already cured here. So what you can do now is you can actually continue starting to tie the, the, the first fly right on top of this. Then you can get a little bit more better view on how this is going to look. Or you can cut it apart here uh, and then just start over again. But I'm just gonna basically continue starting to tie the second fly right after this. And then we take a scissor and we're gonna cut them in between after that. I just have to be a little bit careful there because it's very easy to, to cut with some of the material here. But it's also good when you're keeping it on the same tube because then you can actually see how the fly is going to look when it comes together. So that was the back part. So we're basically going to start the second one just like one centimeter in front of this. So this is basically copy paste again here from the back one. The difference is we're going to run thinner flashable in the front one just to get a fly that moves a little bit better. So here we're going to run uh, some uh, fluorescent chartreuse bucktail. Let's see if I have some nice one here. Let's hope this flare here. I have to go quite high up on the bucktail which is not really favorable but let's see if we have a lot of air in this or we have to choose from another bucktail. I think I'm gonna steal some from this one here. Not so long, but it has a lot of air inside it, so. That can sometimes be the problem, is to find really long bucktail. And, uh, well, it's a natural material, and uh, it is what it is, so sometimes you just have to live with that. It's hard to get them perfect sometimes. Definitely doing a certain season of the year when they have different, um, if it's winter or um, summer fur for them. So I took some for a little bit shorter one here from a different bucktail, which I know has a lot of air inside it. So I get that nice flare regardless. I'm keeping a little bit longer one from the, from the other one. So we have a nice taper to it. This is slightly too much here. So I'm gonna put some of that on the table there. I might need it if I can't get it all the way around here taper those ends so we have a nice taper here. 
and once again make sure that the glue is dry and we are going to hollow tie this forward here so we are going to try to spread it all around again make one two turns and then try to flare it out as much as possible here as you can see I had the bucktail I was using wasn't really too much air inside but still it's going to work quite well when you pull this back and reverse this in any case but if you would have had a, a soft tube here it's really really easy to cut the thread through it and that's not a good situation so so we're gonna trim this so we get that nice and Nice and even there. So we're happy with that. Try to go on the top. So you take your um, reverse tool and do exactly like we did on the previous one. Fold it backwards. Use your thumb and your finger. Kind of compress it around it. And then we go work with the thread forward here. Make sure that we have all the fibers with us make a few turns here so we build up a kind of a color and a support for that one so I'm happy with that one just put a little bit glue on the thread just like we did on the previous one and then just gonna go a few turns close to the bucktail here just to make it nice and strong and now you can actually see this red inside here when that comes in the water and everything becomes a little bit more translucent, it actually gets like a really nice trigger point inside the fly too. So I think it's a pretty cool way to have it like that. So it's both strength and, um, and uh, how it looks. So a nice touch. So we have that bucktail there. We have the, the tail. So now we're going to dress this with some uh, Nayot, uh, some thinner flash abu. And also we're going to end it with a craft for head. So it's a fairly, fairly simple fly. The same techniques, techniques that I usually use, but it's a little bit different touch. So we're not going to use the, mar uh, the magnum ones now. That was for the tail. So now we're going to use a little bit thinner ones. So we are going to start with some, this is lateral scale in a thinner version, which I think is a really, really nice color. Um, I'm using this a lot. Something I use a lot for my streaming patterns too. So we're gonna use five, 10 strands of that. Put it on the table. It's a big mess here at the moment now. So. Then we're gonna run some um, glow in the dark green here, which is also a pretty cool color. That one we have to work a little bit with before we can put it together. So we're gonna put it there. Uh, we are going to run something like uh, well, I'm going to use a little bit, this is like a holographic yellow, which I think we're going to use a few strands of. We just want to keep it bright and, uh, and in the same color theme, you know. These are the um, glow in the dark ones I just, I just uh, cut off here. And um, these plastic ones here which is the glow fibers they have a thin thin uh, support fiber which I don't want so you can see these thin ones here I don't want them so I want to kind of pull these glow in the dark from those support fibers they're mostly likely there for for the uh, production of this so I want to keep these glow in the dark ones naked here so we have a nice mixture now so we're just going to run the comb through this a little bit so we get a nice mixture here so we have lateral scale some glow in the dark some holographic yellow so it's just a nice bright color mixed that's going to be perfect for this fly so so we have that there and we are going to kind of divide this into two equal parts here so we're going to put one on the table one we're just going to continue 
making sure that the tips are nice and tapered. So then we're going to try to flare this over the uh, tube here. Um, basically 60% in the, in the tail and 40% uh, in the front here. Try to get this spread nice and evenly around here, 180 degrees. A little bit like that, a little bit on this side. I'm going to fold these over. Then we're going to run the second bunch on the belly. Something like that. These fibers are much lighter than the magnum ones, so you don't necessarily need to put any glue on top of it. It's pretty okay to just run it like this. So. Same here again. Nice and tapered. 60% in the back. Forward in the front. Let's get those fibers all around here. Fold that over. Get all fibers in the game here. There we go. So we should have them now nice and evenly spread around here. Look like you're getting a nice transit over to the other fibers. So I'm happy with that. We're just going to run a quick turn of super glue over here. So it's strong and durable. Don't get any glue up in the bucktail collar because if you have the hair clamp on here and you get a lot of glue up there, well, you're going to have a fly looking like this. So we're going to run some Bowers Premium Nayot. This is the color Fluo Neon Green. This is a really bright stuff. Uh, it's a really nice fiber. This is giving a lot of love already, but I always when I take them out of the package. When I've used them before, I just take the brush and give them a good comb. And then you get all that volume upright again. So we're going to take a nice bunch of that, like that, cut it off, like that. put that back. As you can see, in this material you have a lot of underfur, which we don't want into this fly because that's just going to make create a lot of hassle and bulkiness. So we're going to comb that out like that. So we just comb it up so we have a nice and uh, very open carpet so it's not too heavy. Put half of that on the table, half of this we're just going to run on the top here. Try to flare it off over 180 degrees as normal. So there we go, we have that. So it's nice and situated all around there. So we're going to take the other part and do exactly the same thing here. So we got it all around. And when I'm tying with my art, I like to just be able so the, the thread won't slip or anything like that. I'm just going to put some glue on the thread here. And definitely when you're tying on a tube. And then just go a few wraps on top of this because then you can actually tie, um, tie it off and, and become a really, make a really nice ending to it. So we're just going to try to get all these short fibers away here. And if you want to be really picky with this, you can take a razor blade and you can make a really nice ending here. I don't think if anybody's going to see that. Definitely not when we're going to hide this here in a, in a whole bunch of craft fur, but it feels pretty good to make it looking neat. So, so now we got the um, back part. Uh, we got the uh, front here. So now we're going to end this with a head of craft fur, which we are going to hollow tie. And then we are going to reverse it to get that seamless, really nice um, uh, front here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go with the thread all the way forward. 
make one wrap here of super glue in the front. And we are going to grab our crop fur. This is Hairlines Extra Select, which is, in my opinion, really good stuff. It's nice and long. What I like to do is to take a razor blade and I like to cut a strip here. I usually do that in my knee here, but like it's a centimeter wide or one and a half, like that. Because it's so much easier to work with when you have those strips instead of that full carpet. So we can put that back in the bag. So we just run that through your brush once. So you get all the existing materials away. So we take a scissor with a little bit longer blades. It's usually a little bit more simple. And then we just stick the scissor in there. This is something I usually do on my leg. Uh, it's much easier, but now we have to do it on the table here so you can see it. But there you can get most of the materials away and you get an even and quite the right amount of uh, fibers right away. Take that brush, take that short under fur away, which we don't want. So we have one nice bunch there and we're just going to prep one more. So if we need it, we have that. Otherwise we have it for the second fly. So. Once again, same thing here. Grab it with your left hand. Take those under fur away. So now we have two nice bunches here. We are going to make sure that this is nice and straight. So it's easy to work with. Take this little bit smaller bunch here, twist it around. And we're going to tie that on the belly. Try to get it 180 degrees all around it. Like that. So we have it almost 180 degrees. Then we're going to take this bunch here. It's probably going to be quite the right amount here. Make sure that these are nice and straight. And we are going to do the same here. Push them there. Try to get it nice and even here. And then work with, us, with the thread backwards a little bit here. Like that. And we're actually going to end the fly here by putting super glue on the thread. Working with the thread backwards here. Then one more. You really want to have that straight line here because when you fold this back, if you don't have a straight line here, you're going to have a head that's going to be a little bit crooked. So the straighter the line, the nicer the head you're going to get here. Then you just make one knot over there, pull it back. And because we have the super glue already there, it's already uh, nice and strong. I'm going to cut the thread with the scissor. Here we can just go in and kind of like just, we don't have to save all of these, but we don't have to soup, cut it super tight either, but just a little bit so we can get those fibers away. So now we have that. So we are going to fold all this material backwards here. So we make this nice and straight color here. So. Usually I move my head in, into the picture here, but I'm not going to do that, so just keep it like that. Take that hair clamp again, push it over. And now we're going to take the Flexman UV glue here. So we just make a thin, thin, thin layer here, just in front of the craft fur. Which is going to kind of support it. So here you can adjust the, the how the head, the angle of the fibers will be. So I want it a little bit like that. And then you just cure it with the lamp. 
And if you have done this properly, they're going to stay in that direction. And it's really a simple way to make it, but it makes it really, really nice and strong. So now we're going to put some ice on this. Um, but first we're going to push the tube out, cut it off, and then push it back so we can make a really nice ending here. Now we're going to push this away from the uh, needle here, so we can actually cut the tube quite close to the head here. Because I want to be able to, uh, I want to be able to um, make a really nice head, uh, and I want to use the glue or the resin actually to go all the way to the end of the tube here, so it makes really really nice head. So that's why I want to. That's why I want to cut it off before I start playing with the head here. So we just adjust the angle here a little bit. I'm just gonna moisten my finger a little bit. So we get that nice there. So we're gonna use stick on ice on these. This is 7.1 millimeter ones. This is something I'm using more and more because it's just so simple when you're using these new e resin, these UV resins. And simple, strong, and the flies becomes even lighter than the epoxy ice. So I think this is really a nice way to go. What we're going to do is we're going to take this eye here, put the needle in the in behind it, oops, like that, push it towards the needle. We're gonna unscrew this one. Yeah, come on. Put a little bit super glue on that. And then we are going to basically just lay this flat onto it here. So like that. Make it stick there. And what I like with this is the, the heads become very light and also it's much easier to make them flexible because if you're using a epoxy eye which is quite strong in the surface it's very hard to make them so flexible as I would like them to be. So once again a little bit super glue on the back side. Put it on your needle. It straight on the shot on the side there, and if you want, you can actually kind of even fold these a little bit, so they become following the head. Depends on what type of head you want to do. Just want to make it a little bit round here, so just wet your fingers slightly, so it's much easier to handle these fibers. So this is the basically the profile I would like to have on the head. So just go back with the, with the clamp a little bit here. By just pushing a little bit of water in here, just makes it so more simple to handle and it's not really going to affect when you cure this. So we're gonna run FlexMed again, like we did in the front here. So first of all, we are going to go in between the eyes and I like to go from the beginning and go towards the tail. So we, we're basically going with the fibers. They're tied in, so they're usually easier to go this way. If you go the opposite way, you're basically going to pick up all the fibers on the way. So we're done like that. And I'm going to basically just give it a little bit push here. So we get a little bit of volume to the head. You can actually make sure that you just get that size that you want happy with that so just go ahead and cure it. I think you see we're using quite bright materials <laughs> so iOS would have been a probably a good suggestion here. So so that's the first that's basically to build the profile of the head you know. So now we have already done that so now we're going to go in and basically cover the side of the eyes here. So we lock that in place and also we want to do like a thin layer over this entire head here. Before we make the final version all over it. Something like that. 
So basically this is not going to be the final one, but it's going to be kind of a, trying to keep it getting the right profile and just for that final cure or final layer. So now we're going to go for the last layer here, which is going to be the final finesse. So now we're going to, we already have quite a lot of resin here. So this might, might be the, where you can actually have some material dropping in your knee. So be a little bit careful here so you don't get some, so you don't ruin what you're tying flies in. So now you can understand why I wanted to cut the tube off before, because now you can see you get that really nice head all the way to the ending of the tube. We're just gonna move that a little bit around and then we're gonna hit the lamp here to cure it. So it's really simple to make strong, durable heads and a basically hollow tie this one too. So, so you're getting a head that is um, very light. You're actually getting a fly that is very, very light, which you can actually fish with an eight weight if you want to. But, um, but you're actually getting light heads, which is not too bulky, which is not too much material. So they're gonna swim extremely well in the, in the water. So the only thing that kind of um, is needed now is to cut these two flies apart and uh, put them on a wire trace and good to go fishing. So here you just have to be a little bit careful because it's very, very easy that you um, cut the material on the fly here on the back side. So I usually use a sharp uh, wire cutter here when I do this because I don't want to cut the materials on the back side. So I go in, go quite high up in this, and I cut it off like that. And then you just go a little bit closer with the scissor to adjust that. So, back fly. Of course, when you use it in the water once, it's going to look much, much better. And then the front head. So. And when we take the, uh, the rig here, which we're going to run it on. So we're gonna take that one off. So like that, so. So this is the Bauer Pike rig. And this is with a stinger and a dragon tail and everything connected to a 40 pound wire. This is the Partridge 49 strand. So we're gonna push this onto this one. Push the tube. Push the rig inside the tube like that, so it's nice and strong there. You can see that the flashable here you can, I have a few that are just on the board line too long. But that's nice, so this is going to be really nice in the water. And then we're gonna push this front fly to the top here. And we have quite a cool setup. And of course, if you just want to add a little bit more color to this, well, we can just run, let's see what we have here on the table. We have, uh, here we have some orange too, so we can play it around with that too. So here we can have a little bit orange too. Push that too on top of that. And then we push the chatras on top here. As you can see, the possibilities are endless and it's a really cool way to be able to have a lot of flies in your fly box and be able to ready for, be ready for all type of changes. And super simple to tie, very easy to cast and they're gonna last for a long, long, long time. So of course, if you want this fly, leave a comment and one of you lucky guys are going to get this in your mail. Take care guys, tie flies, catch a big bike.